The bizarrely beautiful Buddha Park, also known as Xingguan, is an open air sculpture park 25 kilometers southeast from Vientiane, Laos, in a meadow by the Mekong River. Although it's not a temple, Wat, it may be referred to as Wat Xiangguan, since it contains numerous religious images. The socialist government operates Buddha Park as a tourist attraction and public park. The park is open from 8 a.m. until 5 p.m. every day and costs 15,000 kip or 0.85 euro with a 3,000 kip parking fee if you drove there by motorbike as we did. It's known by locals as Xiangguan, which means spirit city and it's a setting of over 200 sculptures of various shapes and sizes, depicting figures from Buddhist and Hindu traditions and lore. The park was started in 1958 by Banloa Sulilat, a priest shaman who integrated Hinduism and Buddhism. His perspective was inspired by a Hindu Rishi, under whom he studied in Vietnam. After the revolution in 1975, anxious about the repercussions of the rule of the Patet Lao, he fled from Laos to Thailand, where he built another sculpture park, Salai Kyoku, in Dong Kai. Both parks are located right next to the Thai Lao border by the Mekong River, only a few kilometers apart from each other, and the tallest structures of Buddha Park can be seen from the Thai side of the Mekong. The statues are made of reinforced concrete and are ornate in design. They appear to be centuries old, though they are not. They are sculptures of humans, gods, animals and demons. There are numerous sculptures of Buddha, characters of Buddhist beliefs like Avalokiteshvara and characters from Hindu lore, including Shiva, Vishnu and Aryuna. One notable sculpture resembles a giant pumpkin. It has three stores representing three levels of existence, hell, earth and heaven. Visitors can enter through an opening, which is the mouth of a three meter tall demon head. A climb several staircases from hell to heaven, each study contains sculptures depicting the respective level. The sculptures were presumably cast by unskilled workers under the supervision of Sulelat. At the top, there is a vantage point from which the entire park is visible.
down again. An Allah sculpture, an enormous 40 meter long reclining Buddha, forms the centerpiece attraction of the park. Visitors are free to wander between the statues among the tranquil greenery of the banks of Mekong, take photographs and in some cases climb the structures. Although the statues and sculptures seem ancient and appear to be carved from stone, in reality this park is, as I mentioned earlier, relatively new. In 2017, it underwent heavy renovations, which added walkways and good quality toilets. Xian Guan is totally unlike anywhere else because of its twin devotion to both Buddhism and Hinduism. It's not officially a temple, despite of him being called Wat Xian Guan, and what means temple in Lao Thai. Locals often wo worship here and see it as a holy place. That being said, it's almost more akin to an art installation than a religious place. The imagination Bunlea Sulilat must have had to conceive the bizarre demons, humans, mythological creatures and religious crossbreed that twist and parade across the park must have been enormous and creative. Well, this one man, an alleged priest shaman, Bunlea Sulilat, that is behind this eccentric vision, is often referred to as a monk. But in fact, records show that he was a fairly poor man with no artistic training. Nevertheless, Pandya Sulidat studied both Buddhism and Hinduism and had a desire to see the two religions integrated. Pandya was mentored in Vietnam by Hindu Rishi, a wise man called Kao Ku, who he met after falling down into a cave as a child. This wise man had heavily influence on Pandya's design. He set to work constructing his huge statues with a team of his own students, and the Buddha Park took shape in 1958. Unfortunately, this creative period was cut short by an increasingly turbulent and complex political backdrop. At this point, the Vietnam War was underway, and the Laotian Civil War was kicking off too, which would culminate in 1975 with the overthrow of the Laotian royal family by communist forces at Lao in Vientiane itself. The Kingdom of Laos became the Lao People's Democratic Republic. With a new communist government, Pandeo was forced to stop his construction because the new government didn't support religion at first. Because of these complicated and dangerous times, Pandeur decided to flee over the border to Thailand. He promptly started his next project, a matching sculpture park in Nong Kai, that he named Salak Kauko, after his wise shape-shifting mentor. All of the statues in the park are larger than life and unforgettable, and each one is remarkably ornate and decorated on every surface. Some of the details are bizarre. Elephant trunks extending out of figures' faces and multiple heads shamelessly crowding for attention. The fight for space spread across the grassy park and with the luscious trees of the forest behind the sculpture park calls to mind the much more ancient majestic stupas of Bagan in Myanmar and the epic Cambodian temples of Angkor Wat. Hinduism is a complicated religion with hundreds of deities with individual stories and traditions dating back thousands of years. Iconography and the worship of idols is a key part of the religion, and gods and goddesses represented an image from either a painting or a sculpture are known as Murtis. Characters from Hindu mythology loom large as Murtis at the Buddha Park. For example, Shiva, the three-eyed destroyer god, Vishnu, the preserver god, usually portrayed with four arms, and Arunya, known as the Archer, the son of the god Indra, 
as well as other animals, humans and demonic creatures. There's a Hindu god Indra riding its white three-headed elephant, Aravata and Erwan, alongside a stone deity with four arms atop a horse, and multi-handed, multi-headed and other generally multi-limbed gods. You could spend hours analyzing these statues. We stayed for several hours in the Buddha Park this morning and were fascinated by all the creativity the artist behind this had shown. I could certainly have spent a whole day here just studying each sculpture closer. Morning is a good time for a visit to Buddha Park. Symbolically, most of the statues face east towards the rising sun, with the exception of a few that represent death that face away. So if you head there in the morning, you'll get to see them lit up, which makes much better photographs. Later on in the day, you'll struggle to get photos with the sun behind the sculptures. The park also get quite crowded from mid-morning onwards, especially on the weekends. I looked forward to see the video footage again when I get back home and to find out more about this magnificent park. You should not miss out a visit here if you come to Vientiane, the capital of Laos.